The Gospel of Mark Be silent. Mark 3, 11-12 Hello. This is devotion number 39 since we first began our study in the book of Mark. In our last devotion, we were studying in chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Jesus was at the Sea of Galilee, and he was healing people. He was preaching the gospel, pointing to himself as the promised Messiah who died on the cross for us. Many people were coming to Jesus from near and far. There were so many people that Jesus needed to get in a boat to teach. If the boat had not been there, it would be finished. People would just crush in on him. Let's look again at verse 9 and 10. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. Mark 3, 9 through 10. The people were just pressed in against him, drawn to Jesus. And there were in the crowd some who were demon-possessed. Let's look at the next verse 11. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. Mark three eleven. These demons that possessed people, this was during the time of a long time ago in biblical times, and it's hard for us to comprehend that happening. And it's because during our culture today, it's different. We don't hear often about this or at all about this. But at the time, a long time ago, people were demon-possessed, particularly the Jewish people in this region. The people would have demons that overtook them. They were unclean spirits. One person that was there in the group, they saw Jesus, and they came to him and fell down before him. And the people could not see the demons that were within him. And the reason is because they were evil spirits. Couldn't see them. Even though you couldn't see the evil spirits, they were powerful. They could control a person, their movements, and also speak through that person. Now the evil spirits, they knew exactly who Jesus was. They knew he was the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. Mark three twelve. These demons hollered out, You are the Son of God. And Jesus rebuked them, saying, Be silent. Now the Greek translation, the Greek translation for the verb strictly ordered, that shows deep emotion. Jesus, he was very emotional saying this. Suppose, for example, there's a deaf person saying, Finished. He's very emotional. He's showing this. Jesus did not want people to know that he was the Son of God yet. We read previously in Mark chapter 1, verses 23 through 26, Jesus is telling the evil spirits, Be silent, come out. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. Mark 1, 23-26 Jesus, he was not going to allow the demon to speak. No. Why not, though? Well, it was because the demon would say that he was the Son of God. No, Jesus couldn't have that. There was already a plan God had put in place for Jesus to go to the cross and be the sacrificial lamb to remove our sins the sins of the world. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2.2 2. Suppose people knew that Jesus was God. They would cherish him. They would not allow him to be put to death on a cross, and that would thwart God's plans. God's not going to allow that. Jesus let a few people know, his disciples. But Jesus was not going to allow the evil spirits to go saying that he was the Son of God, the promised Messiah of long ago. God's plan was that during the next three years, everything would come together slowly. 
and Jesus would let a few people know who he was before he died on the cross, the terrible death of the crucifixion. That is known as the messianic secret. Now again, Jesus strictly ordered, be silent. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once. Mark 1, 43. God's plan was perfect, perfect plan. Before the earth was ever made, God planned everything in history. Was he going to let anything mess it up? Of course not. Wow, we are given such comfort from our Savior. It doesn't matter the things that happen to us, good, bad. It doesn't really matter. It's all in God's plan. It's all of his plan for good. This next verse we're going to look at will help us to understand, to have peace with God, knowing God loves us so much and takes care of everything for us. Everything comes together perfectly. Coram Dio. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. To live Coram Dio is to live one's entire life in the presence of God under the authority of God, to the glory of God. Everyday Breadcrumbs, Devotional Studies for the Deaf, by Brad and Tammy Schaff, taught in American Sign Language, by Brad, with voiceover by his wife, Tammy. All verses from English Standard Version, braddaleshoff at gmail.com.